Ever since the 60s, we've accepted that there's lateral movements of the Earth's crust. Hapgood, in a sense, kind of anticipated continental drift. And so supposedly, you know, if you have a um, coalescing where plates are coming together, you're going to have either an overriding of one plate or you're going to have a buckling. This produces orogenesis, the uplifting of mountains. If you got like on the leading edge of a plate, or if you're on a, a separation zone like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it's going to be separating. Magma is going to be welling up from the mantle, spreading out. And this is how they set up that chronostratigraphic framework based upon changes in the geomagnetic field. Because when the magma crystallizes, it, it freezes in, it locks in the orientation of the minerals along the prevailing magnetic field. This is how we know that the magnetic field, the primary way we know that the magnetic field has, is actually quite dynamic. Getting back to what I'm talking about here is that we're accepting lateral movement and we know just from Hudson Bay, for example, that the Earth's crust can move vertically. This is the isostatic movement, vertical, right? In Hudson Bay, it appears that the crust of the Earth has been depressed by the weight of the ice at least 1,500 feet, maybe in places much more than that. 